the following brands have in one way or another contributed to this video. Hey everyone, my name is Max, welcome to my channel and in this video I'll be taking a very close look at this Dynelectro 66BT Baritone. I'll be using my penalty point system, which is explained in details in my other video, but long story short, I'll be checking each and every aspect of the instrument and every time there's an issue or a problem, it will get a penalty point. The less penalty points it has at the end, the better, alright? But before we get to that, let's listen to what this guitar sounds like in the mix. In the United States you'll find this guitar for 799 US dollars. And in Europe the current price is 929 euros. I have already found the best solutions for you and you will find links to different stores in the description to this video. And even if you don't need this guitar, I would still appreciate you checking some of those links because they have some built-in magic and every time they're clicked it brings happiness and joy to this channel. So here's the box the guitar comes in. It really is a plain box and the only thing written on it is the model name on the bottom. So let's open it and take a look inside. Fun fact, it seems like this box was meant for a bass. Fixed to the headstock you'll find two plastic bags, one with a tremolo arm and the other one with five allen wrenches for setup and adjustments. Other than that you'll find a poster featuring 59 XT model as well as this one 66 BT and a couple of nice cars. And that's all, there's nothing else left in the box so let's unwrap the guitar. Here's the close-up of the paper that comes with it. Every guitar set in the USA. That is a warranty card actually. The warranty period is 12 months US only. At this price you would normally expect a case or at least a gig bag to be included, but no, there isn't any and that brings the first penalty point. And now let's take a closer look at this guitar. Ok, let's go through the specs and the first thing that is different to any other baritone is a semi-hollow body with an F. And unlike any other Dan Electro guitar, it is actually made of alder, not of masonite. It also has a bolt on maple neck with a power ferro fretboard. The thing is, the official specs say rosewood, while any other source says power ferro. Here is Stoman, here is Sweetwater, and it's a little too bright for rosewood, so the actual specs don't match the official ones, and that's the penalty point. This is not a typical baritone, its scale is 29 and 3 quarters. The fretboard radius is 14 inches. Here's the neck profile at the first and the 12th frets. The neck is slightly thicker than the standard Dan Electro neck. It looks like a C profile and here is how it compares to some other neck shapes. This guitar has two pickups, a dual lipstick, a humbucker in the bridge and a P90 in the neck which is angled a little bit, a modern Wilkinson two-point tremolo, vintage tuning machines and here on the back of the headstock there is a sticker that says made in Korea. This looks like graph tech nut, even though the official website doesn't say anything about that. The controls include volume, tone and a three-way pickup switch. And the tone knob is actually a push-pull, it is a coil split for the bridge pickup. The output connector is on the front and it should work with any kind of plug. It is a high gloss see-through finish and it's kind of darker than I thought it would be after looking at the pictures at the official website. Here's the back of the guitar and you can see where two pieces of the body were glued together. I didn't find any issues worth penalty points here. This guitar has 22 frets and here's the width and the height. Looks like jumper frets to me. 
Speaking of the fret job in general, it's pretty good and consistent. There are no sharp edges, fret slots are filled. There is a little bit of fret bus here and there, but nothing dramatic, nothing that would be worth a penalty point. Let's check how many tools you would need to set up this guitar, not counting the truss rod wrench. A Phillips screwdriver, that's one. One wrench for studs. Another wrench for saddles. One more for the action. And one more for this screw on the back. That makes five tools, which is two tools too many, and here are two points for that. The truss rod adjustment is not accessible right away and requires a screwdriver to get to it, and that's another point. Here's what it looks like. Let's talk about the tuning stability, or instability, because there are a couple of things here that make this guitar go out of tune from time to time. That would be the headstock design and the tuners. As you can see, the headstock is angled just a little bit, that doesn't contribute to the instability, but most strings don't go through the nut in a straight line, and together with a thick nut it creates more friction than there should be. And these vintage tuners are not exactly tremolo compatible. There is no tightening screw here, so I have no control over how tight they are, and even though this guitar stays in tune better than I thought it would be, changing these tuners to something more tremolo appropriate would be a great improvement. With that said, here's another point. Let's check the weight. 3.5 kilos almost, or 7.6 pounds. This guitar has a very long and heavy neck, and if you let it go, it will go down and bring another point. It is time to open this guitar and find out whether it is properly shielded. Here's what's inside. And as you can see, there's no shielding at all, which brings another penalty point. Here's what different pickup combinations sound like. I will be using amp number one for the clean sound, which is Eras of Black Space. And for the crunch, it's gonna be amp number two. And finally, amp number three, angle iron ball for some high gain stuff. The tone knob doesn't do anything until the very end. Which means a wrong type of pot was used, and that's worth a point. Now check this out. I hear noise that should not be there. That's much better. Two points for that. One. Two. Okay, let's put it all together. This Dan Electro 66BT has got 11 penalty points, which is quite surprising because I expected it to be somewhere around 8. It's not all that dramatic, though. 
Two noise points can easily be dealt with, just as the trust rod access, and with some skills you can take off the list another three. And out of the five remaining points, the biggest thing would be the neck dive. And I have to say that most guitars, if not all, come with issues like inaccessible truss rod, too many tools required, or a wrong tone pot. But this very guitar is actually pretty unique. Almost 30-inch scale semi-hollow body baritone that sounds like no other. If that is not special, I don't know what is. As it is often with done lectures, you either hate it or love it. Now, watching this back, I realize that it kind of may look like a negative review, which it isn't at all, because it is a great guitar, it plays well, it sounds good, and most importantly, it's fun to play. So if you have any chance to check this guitar at your local store, do that, because it is totally worth it. Wow, you've made it to the end of this video. And I'm very happy about that, because first I can say thanks, and second, not many people make it this far, it would be really great to hear back from you in the comments below, and not necessarily about the topic of the video, just, you know, say hi, for example. If for some reason you like what I do here on this channel and want to support me, there's Patreon, you'll find the link in the description below, and other than that, subscribe or don't subscribe, whatever you feel like. That's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video someday soon.